In a previous video, we've already talked about the definitions of species and populations and communities and combined with the abiotic factors making the entire ecosystem that we're actually talking about. Here we're going to look at something that will actually tie in with the evolution units as well and even ties back to genetics and genes and alleles. So there's something called reproductive isolation. So if you break these wor words down, it kind of sounds like um, for whatever reason, different groups become isolated from each other and are eventually are no longer able to reproduce with each other. So in the evolution unit, you're going to see some other things like behavioral isolation, which results in the same thing, reproductive isolation. So this is kind of the umbrella idea here, but they can be different groups of organisms belonging to the same population can actually be separated by a physical barrier. For example, here, uh, some kind of river ends up separating two groups or a lake dries out and becomes like two smaller lakes or three or four smaller puddles. So you can separate fish populations like that. If food sources start to change, you can end up um, creating isolation in that sense. And the idea here is that over many generations, eventually um, these groups that have been separated by whatever factor may no, no longer be able to interact and actually reproduce with each other. Even if they are genetically fit, some behavioral mechanism for birds, it could be something related to changes in their bird song. And the song that one person, one bird sings may not be attractive anymore after several generations have actually passed. So it's kind of a, a mechanism for evolution. There's still some debate about how much this actually happens, but um, it is understood to be a mechanism for how new species can arrive. So um, in this unit, you're going to be learning about classification as well and how we separate animals into different groups and the different types of characteristics we look at to actually separate these animals into different groups. So this is a pretty cute little diagram uh, that kind of illustrates this as well too. So after you know several generations of being fed a different type of food source, eventually they don't end up mating with each other even though they were all descendants of the same original population here. So here, a population, this is review, a group of organisms of the same species living in the same area at the same time. If they live in different areas, they're unlikely to interbreed, but because they're still the same species, you could potentially bring them back together and still be able to reproduce. But if they're separated for long enough, for whatever reason, they may not be able to interbreed and then gradually start to develop some of these differences through mutations or sexual reproduction and changes in their actual um, genomes overall, enough so that they can't actually interbreed when they're brought back together. At this point, then scientists have to argue and be like, hey, maybe they're different enough that they're, we, can, we can give them new species names and name them after you know my great grandpa or something like that so we're going to revisit this in the evolution section and like i mentioned before uh, biologists do sometimes disagree on the extent of reproductive isolation in order to really understand this stuff you have to be able to observe these organisms over many many generations the human lifetime is pretty short so it's not like we can sit around and watch um, you know many generations of monkeys go through they live pretty long so we, most of these studies tend to be on organisms that have relatively short lifetimes so that in you know 10 years of research in a graduate institute you can look at you know hundreds and hundreds of generations of drosophila fruit flies or looking at bacteria which reproduce really fast but it's hard to do extensive studies like this on something like a turtle or a hippo because the number of generations is going to be relatively few in the 15 to 20 years of research that I actually try to do. So, uh, yeah, reproductive isolation, and that is something that I hope never happens to me as a human, because I'll be very sad in the future if I become reproductively isolated. Okay, this is getting too weird. Anyways, study hard.